Well, there it is. I had some time I could set aside over the winter, and I made the push for the atomic camo. And now they finally made the Panzerfaust possible, albeit still extremely annoying to wait for the dogs for this challenge. The only saving grace being that you can destroy two planes with a gun, then use the Panzerfaust for your third destroy of the game for it to count. It's like the Bloodthirsty challenge in that way, except you can only get one of these per game. That third thing can be a guard dog or attack dog now, meleeing with the launcher does also work, and you can sometimes stun lock dogs with melee. And it can also be a plane, if you can hit one, which is where most of mine actually came from, because I was done waiting. I started to get better at it, despite the trash hitbox. Wouldn't recommend that, though. I found it helpful to max my dialogue to listen for dogs being called in, and don't play TDMs too short. So yeah, it still sucks. Uh, you could wait and hope that their next attempt at a fix is better. This would have been okay as a passive if it were like this from the start, because you could switch to it whenever there were dogs. But for the frustrated people who've only got this left, who've been waiting, well, now they're stuck with more waiting and hoping, maybe feeding the enemy kills, maybe dropping care packages. Also, it apparently still may not track for some people. Also, you still need direct impact long shots, unlike the Mark 11, which is now much worse because Fortified makes a direct impact a hit marker. Yeah, one subpar change after another. Holy moly, just make it easy at this point for the people who have been waiting. What are you doing? It just feels disrespectful. Oh yeah, and friendly dogs are still highlighted by Engineer. Frustrating bait. And cold-blooded still doesn't protect you from dogs, that's an issue. And the bug with Well, if you're curious, the camo took six days, six hours of in-game time. Although not all of that was going for the camo, and the last ten hours was just waiting around and dying with the Panzerfaust. Not much else to say about my stats, I don't play for them. Tons of weapon XP testing ensured my win-loss would never recover. Normally I rarely quit out of games, because I don't care if it's lopsided or whatever, but I eventually figured, yeah, may as well leave if a game is in a terrible state with too many of the fire grenades, screen shaky streaks, infinite dogs, or if there's just no way to make any challenge progress. I'll just say, my conscience is clear. The proudest point of my stats has got to be, I've never even equipped the incendiary grenade. No barrage either. Yes, thank you, thank you. Nothing much to see for weapons. Remember, this is kills, not including assist limbs, so they seem a little low. Plus, some have to be bugged, like four knife kills. I did the gold knife. Maybe this wasn't tracking back then? As far as completing the rest of the game, like these challenges, well, they fixed the bugged spy plane stuff, so it's just apparently that I've never used stims or blind fired. Yeah, why would you? Then a few more of these, which would just require a bit of teaming up again. Yeah, it wouldn't take much to finish these off, but I just don't see any reason to when there's nothing for doing them as far as I can tell. And even if there were, I don't feel super proud about completing what feels like a bigger seasonal set. It's not a game mastery. I would maybe finish them if the game were just that fun to play, but it's felt like a bit of a downward spiral. We'll get there. I'm quite content to consider Atomic to be the end game. But speaking of the seasonal, this thing was fully passive, I never even read these, paid no attention, and they all got done pretty quick while doing the camos. It is just all about a long, bland XP grind to unlock them, and I just do not care. I guess in this case I'm down for them to be passive, because that's the only way they were getting done. Well, 150 hours to be done with the camo. That's a fair chunk of time. Not too outrageous for a mastery type objective that isn't meant to be completed in a couple months. You know my frustration has never been with the length of a cosmetic mastery grind, but with how they should make the attachments more accessible, and the total nonsense of that secret XP limiting. It feels like at every turn they make unfun design decisions to artificially extend playtime instead of keeping you around by focusing on the fun. Yet, I finished the camo anyway. Why? I think it was to be able to feel and say that I put in the effort, this chapter was properly closed, or maybe it was just to have something to talk about here. Yeah, without the video plan, I don't know what the motivation would have been. Vanguard's been a journey. Started out feeling pretty dang positive. I went in knowing there would be problems, expecting a lot of the same as far as COD's yearly cycle of issues goes, because I'm not that naive after a decade of this. I was expecting to go with the flow when it came to laughable balance, and I had some initial fun with that mindset. But as it tends to go, things start to surface like that XP limit issue, which is a pretty big sticking point for me. Then another big mess of a Warzone integration happens, breaking everything, making current and previous games unplayable for a good chunk of people, never-ending bugs, and above that, the lingering feeling of the shady Activision overlords. Yeah, they did their best to slow down my weapon XP, it seems, to make this camo take a little longer. I hope getting that extra day of playtime out of me was worth being the core reason that began changing my attitude towards the game, from what could have been happily completing the camo and looking forward to some new content, new guns, to just resenting being manipulated at every turn. Such a shame, because some other parts of Vanguard I really thought weren't bad, as popular as it might be to hate it outright. I don't think I'll ever do a full formal review, so let's go through some Vanguard reflection here. 
The campaign was all right to me with the expectations I went in with. It's a COD campaign. We talked thoughts at the end of that playthrough. I love the soundtrack. Zombies was a sad point. I think it's a decent minigame. The universe felt like it had potential, but as a full mode, drastically short of expectations. So many things left out, and so many things it feels like they could have done to make some fun. Big horde, round-based content. Why did they full commit to the slow objectives concept? I'll never understand it. They were just now able to finally get something out that resembles infinite survival, the void objective they call it. They threw in a pap camo, working on server pause. Yeah, it's something, finally, but... That was an unfortunate situation to shove Treyarch in there with who knows what lack of time and resources again, build up the hype using the zombie's name to sell some extra copies while not being nearly ready to support what most people have come to expect out of that. Now, multiplayer, let's talk, let's ramble. People say they like the ramble. I've got a lot to say and mostly not very positive, fair warning. Hang on as long as you like. Multiplayer is where I spent all my time, and I found fun in many elements of it. I've said it before, whatever it was originally about the whole atmosphere of this game, the gameplay foundation and engine I think is solid, I was down to enjoy it as a silly casual game. Again, that could have just been the attitude I went in with, or liking some of the new types of progression stuff they put back in, even though they were pretty passive to get done, like the operators and the clan. There was also how they finally went back to having a full array of 16 maps at launch that I think weren't bad, mostly. Made it feel like a more complete package than any recent years. Maybe they they shouldn't have ruined our attention spans by dropping the ship house stuff so early, because once it's there, you kinda can't take it away. The coming and going FOMO is annoying, but yeah, even as a huge user of that playlist, I do think it's a shame that's what Khan has become, for what seems like the vast majority just gotta grind the weapons for Warzone or for the camo. Another central element of this game, though, is the very expansive, everything is OP gunsmith with so many strong combos to find, different barrels and mags that drastically affect the feel and performance of the gun. Many guns can start out as trash and end up being OP in their own unique ways. And while I agree it's competitively very dumb, with something like Pick 10 I think being objectively better, I found it fun to mess with at times, because I went in with that casual attitude, I expected Bounce to be a bit of a joke that I was going to laugh along with. Well, that patience does get tested when they toss health boost perks and mainly that OP grenade into the battle pass, a grenade that can effectively ruin the small maps and be a pain in the ass anywhere for any objective mode. <laughs> hey Johnson, I've got an idea. All right, let's hear it. We add a new grenade, the players will love it. Hear this, we combine the Molotov, Thermite, and Smoke into one. Okay, interesting. But wait, hear me out. We'll make the radius way bigger than the molly and the smoke last longer than the smoke. Oh, I like that. And, and we have no fire resist perk for the first month. Oh, genius. I like it. But it isn't quite annoying enough. Hmm. I've got it. Screen shake. Lots of screen shake. Yes, every time you reload an area, they visually redetonate and shake the screen some more. Make it feel powerful. Excellent, we've done it again. Battle Pass tears will be flying off the shelves. Uh, excuse me, sir. I, I couldn't help it over here. Will anyone still want to play the game, though? Shut up, Steve. Nobody asked yeah, you. Yeah, get out of here. Steve, you're fired, along with the rest of the QA team. Pack your stuff. All right, you get it. It's impressive how a small addition can be so damaging. I know it's only game ruining on small maps where I am all the time, but even outside that, it can cover all of a flag, a hard point, a choke point. It's thoroughly obnoxious. There's also that bug with the redetonating. Anytime I see someone complain about this grenade with some shipment gameplay, it's frustrating to see the replies of, it's only bad on shipment. Stop complaining. You sign up for that when you chose to play shipment. As if smaller maps deserve to be as terrible as possible when it can easily be better than this. I assume that reply comes from people who just spitefully hate that this is what COD's become, everyone grinding away on mindless maps. Like I said before, I get that, I'm kind of on board, but you have to understand with this point with COD, I find it hard to care much about the gameplay integrity anymore, so it seems like you're left with a majority of people just here for the grind. Every time they do a poll, that seems pretty clear, so do we have to fight about it? This ruins the gameplay for a majority of people. Can we just agree the grenade shouldn't be like that? And it was unfortunately timed, it feels like the game is always in a rough state around the holidays when it's time for everyone to take some time off. Which is important obviously, devs are people, spend some time with your family, for real. It's just unfortunate, like, alright, let's break everything with the Warzone integration, who could have predicted that? Let's uh, totally ruin the multiplayer for three quarters of people, and uh, yeah, you still can't turn Atomic or a seasonal challenge card or anything, well, enjoy, we'll get around to the fixes in a month. Yeah, I do know that some partial fixes are rolling out for this stuff, and that things will improve. The better time to do this rant and have everyone agree was over the holidays, but I decided I should keep it in, not just because we had to live with it for a month and in a time when many of us have a bit more time off to play the most. 
but because it is such a predictable trend for them to add OP nonsense to a battle pass with no regard for what it'll do to the game. Because of course they gotta get you to care about it. Oh, better grind this out ASAP or buy the tears outright because you gotta use it now. Get it before the nerf. And oops, sorry every time, doesn't cut it here. Something as awful as that nade, of course I wish didn't exist, but that's not an option. I think it's a case of it should have been flat out disabled until they could come back to work and tune it properly. But I guess not, because some people might have paid to get it faster. And yeah, it's a bit of a kick in the nuts when one of the last major patches for a long time included a totally ineffective out-of-touch Panzerfaust fix when many of your most dedicated players are waiting on it as their last thing for Atomic. They earned that. They want to have what they earned. That shouldn't take months. So many workarounds seem so simple. If it is deceptively complex to just make it copy the Mark 11 challenges, then just auto-complete everyone's challenge or make it brain-dead simple get kills, to get it out of everyone's way. That's how you handle this. Cause being stuck feels like a daily reminder of they don't care, they don't care. Not saying that's true, cause obviously they were on break and then the fix that they want to do takes time, but that's how it can feel. They also mentioned the annoying ass mortar barrage back then, getting my hopes up seeing it there, only to say that the flare needed to do more damage? That was a problem? No problems with the link though, okay, gotta wait a month for that. And stop using this dumbass phonetic naming scheme in patch notes, I swear to god. It isn't cool, nobody knows what guns these are, thank you. I could understand it starting in 2019 because of the conversion kits kind of changing what the gun is, but make the patch notes and blueprints clear to people. Year three of this, good lord, it's so bad. Machine gun delta, woo! It has to be for like SEO reasons, they're avoiding certain gun names in their patch notes. I can't think of why else, like why is it so inconsistent? Sometimes they use the gun name. Yeah, that issue is just a joke that's fun to rant about, but still, come on. They did at least get the Season 1 challenges into the game properly before the break, after a week of total confusion. Yeah, you're Prestige 4. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, actually, you're Prestige 5. No, you're Prestige 7. Nope, you expected to see the challenges in here? Nope, nothing here. And actually, you're Prestige 2. Am I 4, 5, 7, or 2? That is all the same clip, by the way, holy moly. Thankfully, I don't care about my level in this capped system, so whatever. Oh yeah, and the final reward was bugged for a full month, as I alluded to. Stuck at 19 out of 20 for some reason, until very recently. You're not allowed to finish anything until they say so, apparently. I can't possibly cover every bug I've run into, though, and people's experience will vary. So, to finish with the main frustrating gameplay elements, I can't not re-mention the spawns. They are just so bad. Game-wide, not just shipment. They do consistently mention tweaking them and that it takes time. I understand that. And like last time, I think for shipment, they targeted the domination, consistent, zero setup spawn trapping stuff where people always spawned near their flag. That seems to be gone. Okay, but now the spawn system's even more lost. One step forward, two steps back. Because now, maybe once or twice in every game, there's what I'll call a special spawn event. As if it's on purpose. The 10 seconds of mayhem. That's where both teams start spawning in the same corner non-stop. Not just for objective modes, any mode. Isn't that fun and quirky? You start to get used to it. I would quickly realize that it's happening. And I would get ready, knowing that for the next couple lives, I should hold back and get ready to spray right next to me. Man, it's so offensively bad. This spawn system that feels like a branch of 2019's, it's had time to be refined, and it sucks. I'm clearly very ignorant on spawn algorithms, I can only speak from a player perspective, but I don't get it. Why does the logic not care about spawn safety? Spawning next to enemies is so common, it's clearly not a concern. Like it puts a high priority on some kind of spawning in the action engagement thing, or has you get revenge on who killed you, I have no clue. And I know this issue becomes way more obvious on small maps, but it can be seen anywhere. My gameplay is all small map because that's where almost all my time is, but I hear FFA is trashed by it too, I can imagine why. And whenever I'm going for long shots on bigger maps, it's shocking how little time I have before the spawns are behind and around me, even when I haven't seen my team do anything to flip them. I have to say this every time, Shipment and Das House, while they are chaotic and will sometimes not have great spawn locations available, they usually have something better than what we're getting. In COD World War II, Shipment Flow actually worked, not just because of the not climbing over the crates, the spawns actually made some sense, and in these two recent games, they just don't. So I can't be placated by hearing they're working on spawns anymore, I'm sorry. I've become convinced this logic doesn't need procedural tweaking based on the data they collect because that hardly helped for 2019 or so far for this game. It needs to be carefully placed in the dumpster and restored to what worked in older games. 
I just hate whatever this spawn logic is trying to accomplish. It's so bad compared to what I know it can be. And spawns are kind of at the core of the gameplay. It makes the flow of normal maps feel off, and it makes small maps total nonsense when they really don't have to be. I expect mostly nonsense from shipment, but total? Nah, it's just not fun. It's a shame, because I kind of liked the ship miss map overall for a Christmas reskin. I thought it was pretty high effort. They even dressed up the annoying ass dogs in costumes. Every type of objective mode got a thing. Even random details like the background menu particles changing. I always like when people care to change tiny details, because that feels like a passion thing, when you didn't need to do that. But it's not going to overcome making the gameplay painful. And that feeling also gets hurt by seeing the ads plastered everywhere. Bundle this, bundle that. 12 festive days of deals. Oh, sweet deal. Deals. Better hop on and check them out. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds like what you see in a Walmart window. 12 days of deals. deals. Like, fine, you're allowed to advertise, but every announcement on the game page was literally a bundle at that time. If you overdo it with the bundle talk compared to the game content talk, it's always going to feel like a store first and a game second. Okay, aside from the gameplay becoming more frustrating and the issues with Season 1, gotta get to my big thing, cause, you know, I think I could've gotten past all that gameplay stuff if I still had the power of my positive, casual attitude. So what happened to that? Well, before Season 1 even hit, it was greatly eroded by the thing I have trouble getting past when the messed up weapon XP started to surface. Really all about the principle of it, I can get over my weapons taking more time if it were fair, transparent, and consistent. I've maybe held back on this topic so far, just given a few sentences of thoughts each time. Let's fully go through it so I can stop bringing it up. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, the XP throttling I'm alluding to is something I found in some breakdowns in the past. It's hard to understand what is really going on, and now my stuff's maxed and I'm done, so if it changes, I probably won't know or care anymore. But it seemed as though if you gain weapon XP too fast, which becomes very pronounced during double weapon XP, and if you stack on stuff like surplus, operator favorite, all that, and even even more so if you're getting lots of kills on small maps, the game seems to adjust for that rate being too fast, or cap it almost, and your XP per kill drops, and it can be extreme, like getting less than one times XP during double XP per kill. Cause why? You're not allowed to do that well in a game where attachments are massively important and people were already hating the weapon leveling speed? I wanted to give some benefit of the doubt originally, I held back on judging too fast, but I mean, beyond the couple months Vanguard's been out, XP has seemed messed up for a few years now. I think Modern Warfare introduced a lot of this confusion and was a big shift for COD in general, but now it seems clearer than ever that something is seriously wrong with the weapon XP tracking. People made some noise about it, not a ton. I still see most people think the double XP is fine or a lot of people who think it's just the ship house maps that are directly nerfed, as opposed to it being a game-wide design that just becomes very apparent on those maps. Again, I have to mention, I'd be fine if there were a clear and consistent, flat, reduced rate on those maps, if their goal was not making people feel forced to play them for levels, but this is not the way to do that. Feeling like there's no incentive for doing better is the polar opposite of fun design to me. Anyway, at this point, I have to assume they're aware of this up there, and if it isn't getting fixed or mentioned, then I guess I just have to go with the obvious conspiracy theory and secretive engagement-based XP throttling's gotta get added to the list. Cause maybe some higher-up thinks it's healthy for the game to lie about your XP as a way to extend the grind, or maybe to sell you blueprints with good attachments on them, take your pick. I don't even truly know why though, cause I haven't seen this problem with some of the fast methods in Plunder. Surely they want to encourage Warzone players to buy Vanguard to help level up their weapons. So why have this sucky problem? I guess the average player would never know about it before buying. I don't know, it's totally possible that it truly is a bug that's hard to crush or a low priority, but I've seen no mention of it, so it ends up coming across as them saying, we can't have you finish the game and leave, so to keep you around, hmm, well we could focus on making our new content fun and exciting and having plenty of things to shoot for. Imagine in the first week. Hey everyone, we hear you and we made earning attachments twice as fast. For the grinders out there though, you can now go up to 300k, 500k weapon XP to get your clan tag and kill tracker on your gun, max them all out for something cool, go wild, have fun. So many simple opportunities to add higher, optional, cosmetic layers of mastery. But nah, no fun allowed. Let's lie about what you're earning to slow you down. That's fun, right? It's totally double XP weekend. Haha, -ha, come get your 0.8 times XP weekend, honey. And they've been doing the double XP so much. So many back-to-back -back weeks of non-stop XP, even before the holiday period. Just a couple days off in between XP events, which would be nice if it worked, but it just feels insulting every time I see it. It's terribly demotivating to be constantly thinking, well, it seems like if I do too well, I'll just get punished, so who cares? 
Ah, what a fun philosophy, huh? Min-maxing XP boosts shouldn't feel like a bad or pointless idea. That isn't what a game should feel like. Again, to be clear, having a long grind can be a great thing to me, so long as it's consistent and you include all sorts of tiers of goals to shoot for to appeal to the range of players with different amounts of time to play. So everyone has a good, reasonable goal, whether casual or no life, and it aims to be fair when it comes to the gameplay affecting stuff like the attachments. Go wild with the cosmetics. But it's not the length, it's the consistency. If XP really is meant to be on some kind of hidden limit to keep you playing, as I've joked about in the past, that's just absurd, and it heavily brings back the feeling that this is not a game about fun, it's a charade to sell bundles to the people who don't care about any of this nonsense. I know games all gotta make money, and that's fine, but you can do that in a way that is symbiotic. Have people happy to spend money on your fun product. You don't need to employ what sure do feel like an array of sneaky tactics. You can have it feel like the devs are on the side of the players, that they're trying to do what we want, instead of having us feel like enemies in a tug of war. We're not enemies, but it's rough when there's a handful of topics that are completely off limits. Now, I am fully aware that this whole ramble sounds like a very dramatic overreaction to anyone who doesn't care so much about something like this, and compared to what matters in real life, of course it is. It's funny the things we choose to care about to distract ourselves. It's just a video game. Don't worry, we're good. But yeah, you have to understand it isn't one problem to me, it's just another predictable thing added to a long list. Like how the old Warzone Devil XP tokens became straight up lies in Season 1. They haven't worked in Warzone for months, and then after Season 1, they stopped working in the other games too. So, just 100% fake. Cool. You can still pop them and see them count down. Like, yeah, it's totally working. Haha, <laughs> don't check though. If the integrity of the progression doesn't matter, that being one of the final pillars of the game that I've stuck around for, after I was already giving up on the gameplay integrity, because all the people who've enjoyed trying to improve at COD for years are now left with a shell of that experience with the disbanding lobbies and it being hard to track your improvement or feel rewarded for it, so I was going in saying I'm just not going to care, have some casual fun with the unlocks, but now if this attitude towards progression isn't going to change, then I can't help but think, what am I doing here? I've said it before, how can I even make fast XP tips when if you gain it too fast, you actually gain less? How can I be the progression guy in a franchise that doesn't respect progression? Maybe there's a reason the entire internet loves to laugh at this franchise. It's like it insists on making itself a joke. It's always a shame, because I'm sure plenty of individual developer passion goes into the game, and for them it is about making a fun experience for players, and that can feel ruined by a few things like this. Even aside from how I find that XP issue symbolic, every year now it's a battle against all this soulless engagement stuff. No more fun classic aspirational challenge systems and long-term prestige. They've hard committed to what feels like an unpopular resetting seasonal system. All this stuff combined has always felt like a bad long-term franchise plan. Maybe it got a lot of people into Modern Warfare, but now it's maybe starting to feel like there's nowhere to go, nothing to want to strive for on the gameplay or challenge side. I do know the World War II setting is always less popular as well, but I can't help but feel like we're seeing the long-term results of those major changes that have put a lot of people off. Modern Warfare did feel like the big turning point year. It's like they cleaned up the MTX and the supply drop stuff from the outside, but also switched over to this path of secrecy and manipulation to appeal to a larger audience that isn't going to be bothered. Probably good business, at least at first. And I know there were many strong elements of Modern Warfare that led it to be an incredibly popular game, with seemingly a very passionate, loyal fan base. I know a lot of people sticking with it over the recent years. The sequel will probably be very big, and with such a huge success of a game, yeah, why change things? I get it. I think some people don't remember the depression of Modern Warfare at launch, though. I see people now already remembering it as a perfect, finished game at launch. Maybe some of them picked it up a few months down the road, because I remember the non-existent lie of Spec Ops and tons of people hating the MP at launch. The gameplay pacing and style, it had its fair share of bugs, of course, and you really want to play overly dark Azir Cave and Piccadilly and really nice map selection. Numbers-wise, I remember when Warzone came out in spring, it completely saved widespread interest in COD, and then it's ultimately gone on to kind of kill it, as everyone hates. Well, to move on a bit here, to try to see another angle, I know there surely are many people still enjoying the game. I would guess more so anyone who's fresher to the franchise. I know I'm an old boomer looking back on over a decade of COD, a slightly depressing thought. So maybe that's it, right? I'm just burnt out, and it's a me problem. Of course, that should be part of it. I'm old and jaded now. It would be more exciting if I were new to the game, but I don't feel it's truly a burnout thing. Like, to get more into YouTube talk, I actually don't resent being tied to one game. 
because that's a common thing with YouTube and Twitch, right? Most of someone's audience follows them for the main topic or game that they cover, that they're known for. Naturally, most of those people aren't going to be interested in other topics. I've always understood that, especially with a channel like mine that often does more stat-based breaking things down. I respect that many people are here for COD, and if I feel like uploading something else just for fun, I know most people won't care. It's for me and for the people who do. I've never ran this channel in a smart business way. I would have to be making TikToks and shorts for that these days. Not long ass COD commentary. The literal opposite. It's for fun. And I really do enjoy making the COD stuff. If I believe I'm helping people with something or providing info people want to know, that's fun. But every year it seems to get harder to be excited about breaking something down when many comments on every video are going to be, well, I don't care about COD, I just like your videos. Which, don't get me wrong, that's the best, nicest comment I can get, that someone doesn't care about the material but still finds it entertaining and wants to hear me talk about something. Thank you. Which is why it makes an impact on me. It isn't like some generic, anonymous, you suck and sound annoying. Well. Thanks, I sound how I sound. Sorry, don't know how to change that. Yeah, it's the other type of nice comment that can make an impact and make it feel like, well, why am I doing this? I'm not just covering this for my own mild curiosity, am I? In reality, I do know there's maybe a majority of people who don't comment who come looking for COD info. And I do see those comments too, some people thankful for that. My pleasure. But it is very discouraging to be covering a game and see so many people whose opinions I value, like comments I recognize, friends, people I've gotten to know through the Discord, all talking about how they've moved on from it or they've finally given up on COD for this or that reason. And they're good reasons. I 100% understand why you would. Again, this isn't even about being burnt out on the gameplay of COD or with covering the same game. I actually think it's cool to have my humble little place in one game community covering the same sort of thing every year. I'd enjoy having a niche like that. That's Sour, the progression guy. He does those weird spreadsheets. At least I would enjoy that if it were a game I didn't have to feel ashamed of so often. It's a feeling of wanting to be able to stand by the game I'm playing. And with how they insist on these manipulation things, I can't defend that. Not that I have to defend anything they do, of course, but I don't enjoy being a bitching about things 24-7 channel. I know you can play a character, make it funny, but I'd be bad at it. I think people have come to expect more sincerity out of me than being a character, so I'd be bothered by people not understanding it. And also by the hypocrisy of it. There's always a voice in my head saying, stop complaining. If you hate it this much, stop being a bummer and just move on to something else. I just want to have fun with a game in a community of people also having fun with the game. I want to provide something useful or entertaining for that group. Talk about what we like. That's fun. And it feels like it's been a while because they routinely do this stuff and then you add on the buggy disaster integrations. I know it's complicated to pull off. I'm sure they're always doing what they can to fix it. Plus all the pandemic difficulties. I know hundreds of hardworking devs no doubt feeling the pressure nonstop. But when a product gets put out and you charge people for it, all we can do is judge the product, plain and simple. So I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for it. Why would I when I have no control over it? I don't know what's really going on back there. I'm just a player of these games like any of you. Just looking for a good product. And aside from COD, to back up, I know every major game's got their fair share of bugs here and there, or tries to squeeze some money out of you here or there, this or that unfinished, no big studio is without controversy and a reddit full of complaints, but most other games that I play or watch, interact with, feel like games at the end of the day, where there's a prevailing community of passionate players enjoying it, maybe with some amount of pride that they're part of the game. That's what I'm completely missing. Maybe that can only happen with a smaller community and COD is just too big, too casual of a target demo. The people making the decisions for the direction of the game feel completely out of reach, out of earshot. We never get answers on any of the big topics, so it's hard to feel like we're on the same team as the devs, like I often do more so in other games, where at least they discuss all the issues people have with the game. They might have weekly dev blogs that aren't 90% ads for bundles. I don't know, it's hard to feel any pride in this. It keeps getting buried underneath layers of Activision deception. Oh, you're not allowed to progress that fast. We're going to manipulate your matches, manipulate your XP gains, enjoy the illusion of gameplay, buy some bundles, by the way. Oh, this wasn't ready to release? No problem. It's also off putting. So I'm left feeling stuck between not having an interest in just complaining, but also not being able to just be optimistic, to casually enjoy the game like I wanted to try this year, because that can start to feel like I'm ignoring the problems, which nobody's accused me of. I think I trash on them plenty, but it still doesn't feel right to stick to the positive like I'd prefer to. Like there was someone who asked if I'd cover the Warzone integration breaking Cold War and Modern Warfare, and like I just don't know what I'd have to say about that. That isn't the type of video I'd make, and I don't play those games, so I don't know the details, but I saw people who covered it, and I'm glad it's being talked about, of course. It's just another frustration to add to the pile. Both the Warzone integrations have been pretty disastrous in their own ways. Again, I know it's a huge, complicated thing to pull off, but I don't want to sit here and make excuses for broken games. Nobody does. 
Seems like Warzone shouldn't still be tied to Modern Warfare. It's annoying to boot that up, still can't get console FOV figured out, and it shouldn't have practically consumed a game that many people liked. At this point, I assume COD games are going to start feeling more similar than ever, being built on the Warzone-ish engine, making it feel like they should really just be updating one game every year. Stop releasing buggy CODs that take a year to be okay. I don't know, man. Sell a campaign for 20 bucks. Or more like a campaign plus deluxe currency bundle for 45, I'm sure. It all comes back to just wanting to have fun with a game alongside other people having fun. And it's like that can't happen here. Don't want to be whiny, don't want to ignore the problems. So I'm sorry if you want to see year-round regular COD coverage from me. I really am, because I think I'd enjoy that too if the game stopped doing these things that make people hate them. It feels like the COD coverage gets shorter every year. I just don't know what year-long coverage would look like anymore. My complaints would get too repetitive and hypocritical. With the way these games are designed now, even when I think there's a solid multiplayer offering like this year, and I think there will be a solid amount of seasonal content flowing in, it's all very samey though. There isn't enough of the more complex completionism that I've always liked to cover and complete in the past. I feel like I have nothing of substance to say about some new maps, modes, and simple seasonal challenges. It does feel like the true purpose for playing is prep for Warzone, which has its own issues, but at least that does feel like a game. I'm really not huge on BRs, but it can be fun if friends want to play it. Well, that's the awkward limbo I feel I'm in, where I do enjoy providing breakdowns for COD and making what people want to see, but the types of things I break down and talk about the most are kind of getting phased out of the franchise. I've increasingly felt like I'm not the target audience anymore, and it sounds like I'm not alone in that, but I don't want to stick around and whine about it for the next 10 months as if they should cater to what I want, because it feels like a conscious decision where they're choosing who they want to cater their game towards, and I'd just be yelling into the void. Add that together with me seeing so many people and the majority of my friends say they don't care about the game anymore or COD's trash makes me feel a little extra silly to be covering it. Because even though that isn't directed at me, it does kind of translate to the thing you're covering is trash, you're wasting your time. Most of my motivation and enjoyment covering the game comes from other people who are also enjoying the game. If everyone I talk to hates it and I'm the only one still here, yeah, why bother? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a ton, I feel like I'm not explaining myself well, so I'm maybe saying the same thing in different ways, and I'll probably continue to. Uh, of course, I'm super grateful to be in the spot where anyone cares to hear me talk about games. I mean, how deep in this nonsense talk are we? Which is why I feel a certain loyalty to all of you, and I enjoy aiming to please, but I don't even know if that is Vanguard anymore from what I keep seeing. Plus, I've also got to have some interest in what I'm making for it to be genuine at all. The current CODs have continued down a path where I don't know how I can cover it the way I once did. I should say, while people's interest in the game is a big part of the motivation, it's really not about popularity. I mean, COD's always been hated, it's just a matter of degree. I've played COD through plenty of unpopular times before. Plenty of periods of seeing dead game, dead channel popping up. Who cares? Because there was still plenty of stuff for me to enjoy and cover. So it felt like it made sense. I like sticking with the same thing. I would not have enjoyed jumping over to Fortnite, for example. Not because of some kind of game loyalty. I remember some people saying that, like, oh, you loyal to COD, good on you not playing Fortnite. Fortnite. Like, thanks, I guess. <laughs> but no, I just didn't want to. I don't think you should be loyal to a corporation. It's a simple business transaction, and the whole YouTuber thing is a symbiotic situation. There's a reason people make big money playing sponsored games. Well, loyalty is a whole tangent I could go on, but this is already far too long for that. I appreciate the many good times I've had with COD, but damn, man, what are they doing recently? I mean, maybe I would feel more loyal to COD if it felt like they were loyal to me. It feels more like they want me gone. So yeah, I don't think corporation loyalty should be a thing. The only loyalty I feel is to you, who make this channel what it is by caring about any of it. To be perfectly clear, this isn't meant to be an overdramatic statement of never touching another COD. More like, expect very little content right now. I could always see you touch and base to talk about the current COD. If they make an update or do something different that I find interesting, sure, can talk about that. Maybe this is how it'll be going forward. Cover the COD launch, the first season, and then that's about it. I just can't force it, because I think that makes for terribly bland videos. Do you really want me to read out the Season 2 roadmap? If you were hoping for that, I'm sorry. I don't see any value in me doing that. For future COD games, I could always play through the story, have a laugh, even break down the XP for old times, if people want that. Because in my unique case, I could see getting the game just to do a playthrough. 
if I weren't going to record it, then yeah, I would just watch a playthrough. But next year, I guess, is looking like the Modern Warfare sequel thing, most likely. Maybe if they come out with something very different, they pull a crazy MMO Tarkov mode out of their ass that isn't torture to play. I'd love to check out something different. I also can't see how that would ever be polished as a COD side mode, though. I'll just have to be extra transparent at every step in how I expect the standard COD cycle to go. Like, do you really think next year is when everything's perfect and consumer friendly? Well, yeah, some people will think that. I've seen it, because it's Infinity Ward. Everyone who loved Modern Warfare will see their favorite studio finally getting their turn again. It was just the evil, incompetent Raven and Sledgehammer holding them down. This'll be a good year, right? And I bet it will be a much more popular game than Vanguard for numbers, but I don't see the stuff I care about being any different. At least I've been given no reason to think that so far. You could argue it's always been like this, and yeah, I know, COD's always been cool to hate, and there's always been the cycle, but this post-Modern Warfare era has felt very different to me. I'm not trying to jump ship to some other game if that wasn't clear. There's nothing I have in mind that I want to turn this channel into. I don't know what perfect thing would come up to make that make sense. I don't want to force you all to like some other game when obviously most of you followed from COD. Like, I understand that even if you're one of those commenters saying you've quit COD in the past few years of escalating nonsense, I'm sure you still have a familiarity with the game that makes it easy to watch and follow compared to something you've never played. So it's not like I have a big channel change planned. Like, I think I'd prefer going more full time with a real job, as they say. This has always been a casual hobby thing, and I don't like the thought of the channel getting too big. That's a lot of expectations, and people suddenly hating you for existing because you deserve to be taken down a peg or something. I just enjoy making stuff that people enjoy watching, but I run out of COD video plans that I think make sense so early in the year now. I've got the camo. I did a bunch of breakdowns to hopefully help other people get the camo. We covered some of the challenges and some other things I thought might be fun. So we're done here, right? I feel I've done my duty. I've answered the call to it, you might say. We can talk about some updates here and there if they're interesting or different enough, or if I think I can take a humor angle towards it. I don't know. I could see doing some stuff with the older CODs, could come up with some challenges to take on, or the older mini playthrough type things. I do have one totally unrelated one-off video I want to make soon just for fun, but just know that any of that stuff is not taking the place of what would have been current COD content. The alternative was uploading nothing. So if you don't care about something you see, no problem, no need to watch it. I'm sorry if it wasn't what you wanted, but I've simply got none of that to make right now. I will ask, because I'm interested in feedback, if you are one of the people here for COD, what do you want to see? What do you wish I would talk about? I'm curious. Anyone this deep in the video, you are the most trusted inner circle. And not to get your hopes up that I'll make a bunch of videos off requests, because I do also need to feel that it's interesting, that it makes sense to make. Like I had fun with that 141 SND challenge hunting thing, but I think it was fun to make because it had a clear goal, giving it a reason for existing, and it was a new thing to try. I don't think it would be interesting to just keep trying to do that again and again. That is a big content making flaw of mine. Sharing a thing I'm into is kind of the only way I know how to make a video. If I'm interested in a topic or I learn something by going for a challenge myself, then I'll want to share that info or experience for anyone else who might have been wondering or would find it interesting. I hate calling it the perfectionism curse because it's like saying, oh, my videos are perfect. No, they're often very unspecial, but it's definitely related to that. The topics just got to feel like it makes sense. If I don't care about something, I figure I can't expect anybody else to care either and can't bring myself to cover it. Even if intellectually, I know people would be interested. It's like a toddler way of thinking, isn't it? It's funny when I see the comment of like, how does this guy not have a million subs? Well, that's kind of you to say, thank you. But I assure you, it is no mystery. My work ethic is trash, no schedule. What I cover is very niche, especially these days and I actively avoid opportunities to grow the channel all the time. Like, maybe I should say, please subscribe every now and then. It's not like I even think that's a bad thing, by the way. That isn't a virtue signal. I don't care. Yeah, on one side, I think it's a pretentious bad work ethic for me to be going, oh, I'm only going to do what I'm passionate about. Like, dude, almost nobody gets to be passionate about work. They just do it. And I do it just fine for the other work I do. But for a solo, creative, hobby-type thing, it is a trickier thing to force because it affects the product, too. Usually, it's pretty transparent if you don't want to be doing it. Okay, long story short, this ramble's getting dumb. I'm not good at this whole YouTube thing. Uh, yeah, time to delete the channel and go contribute to society. That sounds good. Well, no, we still gotta play through the early CODs someday, huh? Maybe SM2 will come through and save the day. Wholesome, community-driven COD. I can see it already. On the day it's ready to release, Activision sends in the lawyers, pulls the plug. Breaking news, last man in the world who doesn't already hate Activision has changed his mind. 
Yeah, that's a point I haven't even bothered to make. In addition to all the game stuff, it's obviously very easy to not want to support Activision in any way. It's usually not a primary factor in my head when considering if I should play a game, but maybe it should be. Well, alright, what an absurd ramble. As you can tell, this video was all about the for some reason part of the title. I mean, not much to say about the camo itself. It's a camo. We already saw it thanks to the bugs that let people equip it on day one. It's never about the pixels, it's about the journey. And it certainly was an interesting one. Thank you for watching, thank you for everything, and I love you.